Hi guys, this is another new video of SpaceX updates. In this video, we are gonna take a look at today's testing on Booster 7 and key highlights from the T-Mobile event. Before we dive into Booster 7's testing, let's take a look at the chopsticks incident. While the chopstick arms were moving up, trying to move into a safe position before the testing began, it got jammed on its way up. One of the carriage legs crushed a scaffolding on the tower. Someone definitely forgot to remove it. As you can see in this shot, the scaffolding was badly crushed. That incident caused some delay but a team reviewed and decided to proceed with the test. Let us hope that it didn't do much damage to the chopstick arms and the overall integrity of the orbital launch tower. I don't want to see any more damage to the chopstick arms. Okay, let's jump into the interesting part. We hope for a static fire test on Booster 7 today, but SpaceX called it a day for Booster 7 with two back-to-back four-engine spin prime tests on the booster. Maybe they are checking the plumbings and collecting more data from the central Raptors that got freshly installed recently. Hopefully, we will see some static fire tests on the booster in the coming days. And Starship S24-2 got some action again performing another spin prime test. Unfortunately, we didn't see any static fire tests today. The next possible road closure is scheduled for Monday. Now we have to sit and wait patiently. Here are the few key takeaways from today's announcement of SpaceX and T-Mobile's partnership. Elon says by using the service they just announced, users will be directly connected to Starlink satellite constellations. The best part is you don't need to upgrade your phone to get connected to the satellite. Is the, Star the Starlink uh, second generation satellites will be able to broadcast direct to cell phones. So the cell phones you're holding up there, it will be able to broad uh, transmit directly to your cell or mob mobile phone. This lossless connectivity will only be possible with really big antennas on the Starlink Gen 2 satellites that SpaceX is making. The, the, uh, the, the way we're doing this is with uh, really quite, quite big antennas. So, the, you know, so people might be wondering what technology is necessary to make this work. Um, and uh, in order to make this work, you have to, ha have, to have, um, as you might expect, uh, very big ears. Uh, so big antennas on, on the satellites and, and powerful antennas. And you need a, you need a lot of satellites. Um, and, but that's, that's kind of what we have with the uh, Starlink uh, Gen 2 satellites. So if people might, want, might be wondering, you know, uh, what do I need to do to, to make it work? Um, well, you, you don't need to sort of point it at the sky and like follow the satellite or anything like that. Um, the, we, we, um, we're confident that uh, it will be able to work if it's in your pocket uh, or if you're, in, uh, if you're in your car. Certainly if you're, if you're walking outside or if you, if you just pull your phone, cell phone out, it'll, it'll work great. But we think even in your pocket and in your, in your car, it'll, it'll, it'll work. Uh, well, just like the Starlink broadband service, the main objective of this partnership is to provide total global network coverage so that anyone with a phone should be able to make calls and send messages from any part of the world. Even if all the cell towers were taken out, your phone would still work. Thank you. This is such a groundbreaking technological breakthrough. Another gift from Elon to the mankind. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope to bring more other space-related updates later on in another video. So, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and stay updated.